Hello everyone, my name is Aretawan Nomarin, and this is my channel, It Pays to Fear God. This is where we learn about God, His beloved Son Jesus Christ, and their kingdom purpose, the three most important subjects that we can ever learn about, talk about, or discuss in the entire Holy Bible, according to John chapter 17, verse 3. The subject that I have prepared for you and myself today is captioned, If a man dies, shall he live again? However, before we get into that, I once again have a tune that some of us might be familiar with. Once again, the subject that I have prepared for you and myself today is captioned, If a man dies, shall he live again? This is not a recent question, it's not a very new question, it's existed for thousands of years. And Job himself had asked this question in Job chapter 14, in verses 13 and 14, where he stated, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret, until thy wrath be passed. Or wrath is that, the wrath that God is executing in these last days. According to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 21, and Ezekiel chapter 38, and verses 19 and 20, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time, and remember me, if a man die, shall he live again? It's very important that we understand not only the importance of this question, but the answer to it, more importantly. Because the Bible has made it clear that resurrection is a reality. The only reason why we die and uh, you know God promises to resurrect us is because, of course, when Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis chapter 3 from verses 1 to 6, the punishments that God promised them in Genesis chapter 2 from verses 15 to 17, if they disobeyed his principles, ended up having to come upon them because they sinned against him, according to Genesis chapter 3 from verses 16 to 19. And because they were the first two humans on this earth, they gave birth to everybody else, and the death sentence as a result of it continued. According to Psalm chapter 51, verse 5, Romans chapter 3, in verses 10, 11, and 23, Romans chapter 5, from verses 12 to 19, chapter 6, verse 23, and many other places all over the Bible. For the wages of sin is death, as that Romans chapter 6, verse 23 states. However, God promised that one day, which is actually happening now through this process he is going to rescue us from that idea of death the pe the idea of people not knowing god and the idea of people dying at all he's going to defeat that so that we as his righteous ones if we are to him can go ahead and inherit eternal life i will ransom them from the power of the grave i will redeem them from death O death i'll be thy plagues O grave i'll be thy destruction repentance shall be hid from mine eyes hosea chapter 13 Verse 14. It's very important, therefore, that we learn the idea of resurrection, which I'm going to talk about now, because it is crucial to our eternal life, because it's that process that's going to come about before the idea of, of eternal life, the Jubilee, actually starts to happen. Now, Jesus Christ has a lot to do with resurrection. Even before he himself resurrected, he demonstrated a couple of examples of resurrection, sort of as an advertisement to the fact that God indeed has power, and he can give the Holy Spirit to people as he done to Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 3, in verses 16 and 17, and John chapter 3, verse 34, so that such people can be able to do some things. For example... In Matthew chapter 9, from verses 18 to 26, he resurrected a sick girl. Remember, uh, when I say sick, I mean dead, essentially. She was already dead, and the uh, mother had prayed or asked Jesus Christ, Can you, you know, save my girl? Can you rather uh, resurrect my girl? And many people thought, oh, well, look at this person. How is he actually going to be able to raise somebody? Who has already died and make that person live again. However, Jesus Christ actually did it. He just tapped the person, 
and she actually came to life. And that, by the way, tells us that when God sees people dead, that they're in the grave, they're not breathing anymore, we, we should never understand it as God sees them as dead. Like, no, God sees them as sleeping. It's like the way we see people when they're sleeping. We can just tap them and they'll wake up. They're unconscious, but the moment you tap them, you shake them, whatever, they will wake up. It's the same way God sees us. To humans, somebody who is dead is somebody who you can't talk to anymore, you can't do anything with anymore, but to God, they're just sleeping. So they just uh, wake the person up, and then he comes back to life. It's very important we understand this. And then there's the very popular and more prominent example of Lazarus in John chapter 11, from verses 1 to 45, specifically from verses 32 to 45. However, if you read it from verse 1, you get all the details about how Lazarus was already sick, and Jesus Christ was already aware of the fact that he could have went there, saved Lazarus, instead of having him die first. But because he wanted to show others the fact that resurrection is possible and it is indeed a reality, he waited. And Lazarus had already been dead for four days, meaning his body was probably already starting to rot and so on and so forth. Then Jesus Christ went and he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And then he indeed came forth with all the napkins and things that um, they used to wrap him. And then Jesus Christ told the people who were there, untie this guy, unwrap this guy, and let him go. Now, of course, Lazarus died again, which is why Jesus Christ's resurrection in Matthew chapter 28 from verses 1 to 20, the whole chapter essentially, that resurrection is pretty much the first real resurrection because it's not resurrecting to come die again, but rather resurrecting to eternal life. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, once Jesus Christ resurrected, he was resurrecting to eternal life. He was resurrecting forevermore. So it's very important we understand this fact. And it's not only Jesus Christ who is participating in this kind of first resurrection. It's a whole class of people who are going to be inheriting that reward. And unfortunately, or rather just important we understand, humans do not count in that. The saints of God are going to be also be participating in that gang of people who will be inheriting that first kind of resurrection. It's like when you see a tree, for example, you plant a tree and it bears fruits. There will always be first fruits. There will always be first of everything. And many times in the Bible, for example, you would dedicate those first things to the priest, to the holy priesthood, essentially. If you read Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 14, chapter 44, verse 30, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 10, and many other places all over the Bible. You read such uh, traditions, especially in Leviticus, because many of the Israeli traditions were mentioned there. How the, the priest would get those first fruits. Same with God. Jesus Christ and the saints are participating in that first kind of resurrection. However, the saints, the resurrection of the dead saints started in these last days. Jesus Christ went up back to where God and the other angels were living. They prepared heaven, defeated all of Satan's enemies so that people could actually go there. Because obviously you can't go there except if it's been cleansed of all the dirt and grime and enemies, uh, wickedness generally, that could possibly be there. And then the saints that lived before the last days would immediately go up. While the others who were living in these last days, the remnant, according to Joel chapter 2 verse 32, and many other places all over the Bible, would join them. They are the little flock, according to Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Let not your heart be troubled. If ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions, offices, departments, portfolios, whichever word you want to use. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, as Jesus Christ had told his first of all 12 apostles, and of course all the others, according to John chapter 14, from verses 1 to 3. It's very important we understand, they're the class, Jesus Christ and his first fruits, that are inheriting or going to be participating in the first resurrection before the others who are Jesus Christ that is coming. Very important we understand this. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verses 20 and 23, and many other places all over the Bible. If you also read Luke chapter 22, from verses 28 to 30, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, and some other places all over the Bible, it gives that idea that Jesus Christ and the saints, the wives of Jesus Christ, actually, according to Revelation chapter 14, from verses 1 to 5, 
And then there's the general resurrection, essentially in two halves. There's the first resurrection and the general resurrection. And that general resurrection is a combination of everyone else, including the people that Paul had mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, from verses 4 to 40, the other people, and the unjust. Now, talking about the unjust, it's very important to understand people who were judged by God are not going to be resurrected. God's judgment is once. Yeah, it's like when you're in the Supreme Court. You don't get judged twice. You get judged once. It's same with how God judges. For example, the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were warned, they were, they had all their chances, and God judged them by bringing fire from heaven, essentially the sky, which means that God is not going to be bringing them back up. Adam and Eve, they were judged by God. They were sentenced. Those people will not be brought back up. The people in Noah's time, who were destroyed by the flood, those people will not be brought back up. And there are many, many, many more examples that I can give. Anytime, essentially. God or Jesus Christ in these last days judges people. Such people are not going to be resurrected. And I mention Jesus Christ because in these last days, as it is judgment time, according to John chapter 12, verse 48, Psalm chapter 96, verse 13, and many other places all over the Bible. As a result, anybody who does not worship God in these last days will not get a second chance because God is judging this world. He's had enough of what people have done with it. He's had enough of what people have done to Christianity, to everything that God has tried to set up. So he is indeed bringing judgment in this world. So we must take advantage of any opportunity of any kind that we might have to worship God and keep his commandments. Because there are many rewards that God is dishing out to people who can go through the various trials and temptations that are happening in these last days. As this time is a very perilous time. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verses 1 to 5, Luke chapter 21, pretty much the whole chapter, Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and many other places and chapters all over the Bible help us to understand that this is a very dangerous time, so we have to be careful to make sure that God will still accept us, resurrect us, for us to live eternally. It's very important we understand this. And the general resurrection was talked about in many other places all over the Bible. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. John chapter 5, in verses 28 and 29. You can also read Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, and Acts chapter 24, in verses 14 and 15, specifically verse 15. The unjust people I'm talking about are people who didn't know God, and as a result didn't worship him, but people who just didn't have the opportunity to. And all those people are the people who lived before the last days. Those people, like maybe Lazarus or whoever, will get a second chance to come and live possibly a perfect life in God's service so that God can reward them with eternal life. But once again, people living in these last days, now do not take the warnings that the saints and God's messengers generally are giving. Such people will not be judged twice. They will not be sentenced twice. They will essentially be judged now, and then they will not be resurrected. They will stay in the graves. It's very important we understand this. We do not want to take part in that group of people who will not be resurrected, but will rather stay in the graves for eternity. So we should try to fix our lives. And having to do with fixing our lives generally, it's very important that we understand the physical resurrection that I have been talking about is, yes, indeed, a very important resurrection. However, this resurrection at the individual and institutional level is more important, in a sense, than the physical resurrection because, like I said, in these last days, people who are not spiritually resurrected cannot be physically resurrected. Now, what do I mean by spiritually being resurrected? Well, we must understand the Bible talks about two kinds of being dead and two kinds of resurrections. I've already discussed the physical resurrection, but physically being dead does not mean that you are really dead before God. Like I said, people who are going to be resurrected by God are people who are just sleeping before God. Like how we see people sleeping and unconscious and then we tap them and they wake up. But people who do not know God, who willingly sin, are like walking corpses. They are dead to, to God. Even if they're living to man, they are dead to God because they don't know him and they're lifeless. They're like the dry bones mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 37 from verses 1 to 14. The saints and their teachings are what's going to give us life before God. 
according to Matthew chapter 24 and verses 31 and 14, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7, and many other places all over the Bible. So that is why we must listen to them. We are becoming new creatures in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 15 and 17, and many other places all over the Bible. We must repent and prove our sins before God as to be things we want to get behind or throw behind and go and worship God the way he wants to be worshipped. And those people who were living before, before God, they were worshipping him. But then they decide, ah, worshipping God is too boring. Then they go into the congregation of the dead. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. So it's therefore very important that we do not represent ourselves as walking corpses before God. Even if we're making money, doing all those things before humanity, but rather, even if people think that we're lifeless in this world, we're just worshiping God and it doesn't mean anything to God. We are like rivers. And rivers are not dry. They're moist. They're full of life. Same with rainforests. We will be like that to God. And that is when. Because those are the people that God are going to be blessing. People of God are going to be really giving things, blessings, both physical and spiritual, to in this world, according to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, Psalms chapter 84, verse 11, and many other places all over the Bible. Now, from what I said, it's very obvious now. If a man dies, is it possible to live again? Yes, it is indeed, because God, when he created man in Genesis chapter 2, he created man out of dust. And somebody who has the ability to create something should also have the ability to destroy and be able to build it again. It's like when you build a house, and break it down. It's not like the knowledge leaves your head. No, you can go ahead and build it again. It's the same thing with God and humanity. However, in the very first quotation or citation that I had made in Job chapter 14, in verses 13 and 14, Job had wondered about something, and he'd also answered the question himself. And I'm going to go through it again so that we can understand how all that works. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret, until thy wrath be passed. Once again, that being the wrath that God is performing in these last days, according to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 21, and Ezekiel chapter 38, in verses 19 and 20. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time, and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? And then the answer, All the days of my appointed time will I wait, till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. Job chapter 14, from verses 13, right down to 15. That is the answer. And also the same thing that I've been saying for the past time so far. And if you also read Job chapter 19, in verses 25 and 26, Job had also demonstrated such knowledge and faith and confidence in the fact that his Redeemer in this world is going to be judging people in the last day, and he's going to resurrect to come and live in that world that Jesus Christ is preparing for those people who do his will. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. That is that Job chapter 19 and verses 25 and 26. This doesn't mean Job said he's going to physically see God, but rather he's going to understand God. Like he has always had before. He's going to wake up again. He's going to see that everything's changed now. He's still going to believe that God exists. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and worship him. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And that is indeed a summary of what resurrection is. It's a reality because God has created us. And just as how he has the ability to kill us, he also has the ability to resurrect us onto eternal life. And then just to end my talk on the subject, if a man dies, shall he live again? To conclude this episode, I once again have a tune that some of us might be familiar with. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something most importantly. Please try to subscribe and share this video because many people are wondering whether resurrection is a reality, whether it's really something we should be caring about. But the Bible does tell us that resurrection is for both the unjust and just and for the just. 
eventually leading to eternal life. And we indeed want to be a part of that group. Thank you.